And for more analysis, we want to bring in the host of On Balance, Leland Vittert. Leland, thank you so much for being here. And I do want to talk about Israel preparing for this ground invasion of Gaza. What does that likely look like in the coming days? Already, we've seen IDF units move into Gaza on the ground. It starts with the engineering teams to clear out uh, that no man's land that was the buffer zone that Israel uh, created. So as you watch in the darkness right now, those live pictures of Gaza, uh, that is the best advantage the Israelis have. They have the ability to operate with combined arms at, at in the darkness. Uh, and that gives them a little bit of an advantage over Hamas. But a, a couple of hundred yards uh, into Gaza, uh, the, Hamas has put in an enormous uh, array of defenses, uh, anti-tank weapons, mines, anti-personnel mines, tank traps, booby traps, and the like. So these few days that Israel has moved into the Gaza Strip uh, on a piece-by-piece -piece basis to gather intelligence into clear lanes and to start and to start softening the battlefield or shaping the battlefield, uh, as military folks would say, uh, ahead of that ground invasion. Yeah, and talk about the context of urban warfare in Gaza. What makes this such a particularly challenging urban combat situation? Urban com combat is the toughest that there is. You need a 10 to 1 ratio uh, for, for overwhelming military force. Gaza is even tougher uh, because you have a very sympathetic uh, pa uh, population. Uh, you know, 40% plus of Gazans uh, support suicide bombers, for example. That's from Pew Research uh, and others. So uh, at, at every, you know, every corner, uh, you've got tunnels underneath that can move Hamas fighters. You've got the potential for booby traps. Hamas owns the high ground in every one uh, of these apartment buildings that you see. They can put snipers there. They can put anti-tank weapons there. Uh, they can put booby traps and blockades on the streets in order to block uh, Israeli armor as it moves around. Uh, the, the Israelis uh, have, been, have been warned, perhaps, you're going into a trap. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. Hamas has had years to prepare uh, Gaza City to be one giant hornet's nest of everything you can imagine and worse. And as all of this is happening, we know that thousands of Gazans are still struggling to get out right now. And the U.N. calling a mass exodus catastrophic. They're calling it an impossible mm -hmm. task. Help us understand where will these thousands upon thousands of people go? And what is the latest that you're hearing about the difficulties that they are facing tonight? Well, hundreds of thousands of civilians are caught. Uh, they're caught because, one, Hamas is telling them they have to stay at gunpoint. That's number one. And number two, for as much uh, discussion as there, where will they go? Well, if you look at the map, there's a 25-mile-long border with Egypt uh, who refuses to allow them in, who refuses to open any humanitarian corridors. Uh, there, there's uh, an Arab world from Morocco to Indonesia uh, that could offer uh, support. It could offer uh, asylum. It could offer uh, humanitarian aid. It could offer to help up the Egyptians set up refugee camps, none of which uh, is happening. Um, so, you know, the, for as much as the discussion in terms of what would be best for the Palestinian people and how to protect them, there's a pretty strong argument that the best thing that could happen for the Palestinian people and for peace-loving Palestinian people in Gaza is the elimination of Hamas. And tonight we are tracking these multiple breaking reports that uh, the Pentagon is sending a second aircraft carrier strike group to the Mediterranean Sea. And the whole purpose there is to deter Iran, to deter Hezbollah, uh, and try to prevent this from becoming a wider war. I know one of the biggest questions going forward is whether this will draw in other countries um, into the conflict. What does this mean for the region and the world right now? What do we know? We are in a very, very dangerous time. I think it was you and you and I talked uh, a week ago, Natasha, I said that the best case scenario, right, uh, would be that this doesn't expand uh, beyond uh, Gaza and Israel, beyond Hamas and Israel. Uh, and that still is the best case scenario. And it, it would be kind of surprising if it did. At the same time, um, the, the, probably the biggest risk here are for th that of miscalculation. The U.S. is putting an enormous show of force here. But if Iran and, and by, by extension its proxy Hezbollah wanted to get involved in this, You'd think they would have gotten involved with it a week ago on Saturday morning when Israel was stunned and under attack and trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, they knew this was coming, right? So if you're going to attack your enemy, you're going to do it when they are at their weakest. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.